In this video, we present Printable Science's 2020 Soldier Nutcracker Project. A good way to keep yourself busy and to usher in the end of a difficult year and a perfect compliment if you built last year's 2019 Soldier Nutcracker. If that's what you're interested in, then this is the video for you. This year's Soldier Nutcracker has some design changes from last year. We've got uh, taller boots on uh, this year's model. We have uh, a bent arm on one side as opposed to the two straight arms of last year. And the arm is uh, carrying a, uh, a pike uh, staff with a little embellishment up at the top. There's changes in uh, uh, the mustache and uh, in the uniform and in the headgear. You can see that last year's had a, uh, a black hat with a, with a peak, hat peak. And this year we have a crown with, uh, I don't know what you call that. I, I've been calling it a pillow and then I'm on top, there's that. So we've got some changes here. And uh, of course, uh, this has 2020 in the, uh, in the base and this one has 2019. And if you haven't built this one and you'd actually like this to be the first one, you can actually uh, print the 2020 base and the 2019 Nutcracker will fit in that base. So you got it all covered here. So that being the case, let's uh, talk about uh, printing this and uh, assembling your own 2020 Soldier Nutcracker. Now there are about uh, 60 different uh, pieces in the Soldier Nut Clacker, everything from the, the teeth to the small buttons. And uh, that'll keep you busy, although it's pretty straightforward. It's all printed in PLA with uh, two perimeters, a 0.2 millimeter uh, Z layer height, uh, what is it, uh, three bottom layer, or two bottom layers, three top layers, it, uh, whatever you're sort of accustomed uh, to printing. But there are a couple of uh, concerns. First of all, uh, for some of the parts of the face, the mustache, the eyebrows, and the eyes, there is just one thing I want to point out in your slicer for the smaller parts, the eyes, uh, the parts of the eyes, the mustaches, uh, the mustache pieces, uh, and uh, the eyebrows. You're going to want to use your slicer's uh, ability to flop things flat down on the bill plate so that those uh, sit on the bill plate properly. As the STL files are currently supplied, they're uh, in the wrong orientation. So you just want to make sure that uh, the curved pieces uh, and particularly the small curved pieces are, uh, you know, have the flat portion on the build plate itself. The other thing I want to point out is in my experience of uh, printing off this last year, I had two build plates, one for, uh, say, the red that didn't require brim and then another build plate for the red parts that did require brim. And my experience with brim has been such that uh, my settings, I guess, were uh, so well tuned that the brim just pulled away really, really easily from the parts. And so I said to myself, well, you know, I'll just print everything with brim and then I don't have to have as many different build plates and things go much smoother. And that was a mistake because when I printed this all off, I found that for some reason my X uh, first layer height was far too shallow and that everything was fused to the brim such that it was almost impossible to remove the brim. And so this could have been, could have had this video done at least a, a week or two earlier, except that uh, the first video I was trying to put together was more about re removing parts from brim rather than actual assembly of the of the project. So I decided to reprint them all with uh, after having adjusted my machine so that the 
brim that I was used to that just peeled away was restored. Now that all worked except for the pike staff. When I uh, had uh, when I tried to print that, and as you'll see from the uh, time lapse uh, pictures, <laughs> it didn't work out. All sorts of strange things uh, started happening, or not strange, they just all failed. And uh, I realized that, uh, well, okay, for the pike staff, I want to have the brim and these uh, first layer height uh, uh, so scrunched down that it was fused to uh, the brim. And uh, as you can see, you can get really good results with that. So, and if that doesn't work, just print it in two pieces because you can insert one half from the bottom and one half from the top and that'll all work. But in the great scheme of things, just bear in mind that uh, you want to perhaps check your brim and make sure that if you're printing everything as I did with a brim, that uh, it peels away easily uh, from the parts uh, when they're printed. Once all the parts are printed, just uh, dump them on uh, the top of your, uh, where you're building it, and uh, it's time to put it together. So we're going to start by working on the head uh, in uh, the particular build plate that I put together. That was on the same build plate as the uh, hands. So uh, just pull it off and clean it off a bit as the hair attaches to the back of the head. And so you, you want a fairly clean uh, contact there so that the piece fits nicely. So we're preparing all the parts for the, the head, so we remove the whites of the eyes. The only white parts in the way I printed this was for the whites of the eyes and the teeth. And uh, those just pull out, pop out, although uh, a little bit of cleaning was, was needed. Then I removed the uh, eyebrows. Then I remove the irises and they sort of snap into the whites of the eyes. And then uh, finally the pupils now, they're pretty tiny. You might find it easier to use pliers to do this, although you can't grab the pupils too, uh, with too much uh, grip or else you'll deform them. And then we use some uh, tweezers or combination of whatever strategy works to get the pupil in the iris and the iris in the white of the eye. And then we uh, pull off the uh, eyebrows off the uh, bill plate, off the brim of the bill plate, and uh, the two sides of the mustache as well. We're also going to uh, take the opportunity to glue up the teeth into the upper and lower mouth. The upper mouth, the one that fits on the headpiece, is uh, larger than the small part that fits in the lever of the nutcracker. What actually makes it a nutcracker as opposed to just a, uh, a doll of a, a toy soldier. But what we do with the teeth in order to make assembly easier, is if we remove the teeth from the brim, then we have to glue each tooth in separately. Whereas if we keep it with the brim, then we can just glue the teeth with the brim into the uh, mouth part and uh, then just pull off the brim once it's all glued together. And that works well. We also get the crown ready, remove some of the brim and uh, the crown uh, pillow, as I call it. And finally, the a little white uh, bobbin or whatever at the top of the crown. And then the final uh, part uh, we uh, get ready for our first uh, glue up is the is the hair and uh, remove that from the brim and that should uh, glue together well. So now we've got all our parts for the head assembly to go so we just uh, prepare our first batch of glue. Now if you 
like this uh, this glue dispenser that you got that's a printable science project and there's a link to that uh, video and where to get the uh, STL files for that project in the description below so we just need a drop of glue in each of the eye part or I should say the head part uh, pieces because they're not subjected to any great stress or anything like that you just want a bit of glue to hold them in place and I use a five minute epoxy you're always in a somewhat of a race between the number of things that you want to glue and the glue hardening so I've put together here what I figure I can work with reasonably and as you can see I'm just adding a touch of glue uh, to the places that uh, won't receive any kind of uh, mishandling. For the bend arm we uh, use some pins and then uh, there are for both the left and right arm a uh, red cuff that fits at the end of the arm to which the uh, hand is attached, the flesh colored hand. And at the top of the arm we have uh, silver epaulets. So we mix up another pot of glue and uh, we start gluing things together. Now the only thing you want to watch for is when you're assembling the arm that's bent is that you put the hand uh, on properly so that the hole for holding the pike staff is uh, you know parallel to the uh, arm that's held up against the body. As you can see here uh, the hole is pointing straight up and uh, that's how it should be. We also can get ready for uh, some of the base assembly. We get the base ready and the boots. We can glue the boots in place and we can start now working on the torso. So we can remove uh, the belt buckle and the top of the pike staff. Get those ready. But we'll start working on the buttons. And I'm using pliers here to remove them from the brim. And just a touch of uh, glue is going to hold the buttons in place. They really don't need much adhesion at all. And we uh, trim up the lever. We've and we uh, get the crown ready and uh, after we've removed it from the brim we can stick it in the front and uh, then we can clean it up a bit. Then we can glue the other parts, uh, the belt, the belt buckle. We can get our uh, boots ready for their silver uh, trim lining at the top and uh, the pants that go on top of that. And we can uh, move uh, to getting the mouth uh, inserted in uh, both uh, the head assembly and uh, in the jaw as well. Then it's time for the pike staff and uh, I just pushed the uh, hook at the end uh, onto the top. Didn't glue it. Didn't seem any great need for that. Filed a bit off the end so that it would slip more easily into the hand. Now the nutcracker lever, the thing that actually makes the nutcracker the nutcracker, uh, you can uh, assemble in one of two ways. This size of nutcracker is impractical as a real nutcracker because as I discussed in last year's video, the size of nut you can actually crack is about the size of a peanut or maybe a pistachio at best. So there isn't really a need for a lot of strength in the axle, but if you want to make sure that it can stand up to somebody trying to crack a nut, then you might want to not use the plastic axle that uh, is printed off, but replace that with a one inch, uh, one eighth, or is it three sixteenths, uh, piece of uh, 
metal uh, rod uh, that you can get from uh, a big box hardware store. I refer you to the link in the description to last year's video if you want uh, the actual procedures and facts on how to use a steel axle instead because it's the same process and the size of the axle and its position and placement it is exactly the same for last year's model as it is for this year's. I do find, however, that uh, a small screwdriver inserted uh, into the hole helps ream it out a bit and helps you get it all into position so that it's much easier to actually insert uh, the axle, whether it be metal or plastic, into the nutcracker. So time for our final glue up here. The torso fits uh, on the feet. Glue in a couple of arm pins. Glue on the arms. And then finally, glue on the head. Glue on the uh, lower mouth part onto the lever. And then finally, glue on the head. So there you have it, your own 3D printed soldier nutcracker that'll gobsmack your friends, intimidate your enemies, and cause your loved ones to renew their vows of undying loyalty and devotion. Check out the video description below for a link to the STL files you need for this project, as well as a file that'll give you a complete list of all the STL files required. I hope the soldier nutcracker uh, provides uh, you with uh, some entertainment and comfort during the holiday season, and I wish all of you a happier and merrier 2021. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to follow along and see all the neat projects we have planned for the coming year, then make sure you, you keep in touch. As always, we invite you to visit our website at www.printablescience.com for all the science that fits. 